Let him give it up right now for the very funny Matt Ripper, everybody. Come on! Come on, everyone! Come on! Well, the thing about getting married, too, is like, I just don't want to give up the ability to make really rash and horrible decisions. <laughs> like, my brother just got married recently, and like, I called him up. I'm like, I got a great idea. Let's get some hookers, get in a limo, go to AC, and empty our entire bank accounts. <laughs> I'm broke. Anybody broke here? Anybody have debt? Anybody deal with debt? Yeah? I'm not talking about small debt. I'm talking about the kind of debt that makes you think about killing yourself, you know? So, you know, the weird thing is at the beginning of the month, I do my budget. I'm like, okay, uh, it looks like I've saved $500. And then about three days in, I get drunk, and I wake up, and I get that call. You know the one from your friends telling you about all the crazy and stupid things you did last night? Not that call. The automated one from Visa Fraud Monitoring <laughs> telling me all the crazy and stupid things I did last night. Hello, this is Visa Fraud Monitoring calling to verify the following 10 charges that took place between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. To give you an example of how broke I am right now, I went out to dinner the other night and the bill came and I said, oh, can you split it on these two cards? And I was all alone. <laughs> Can you put $6 on the Orchard Bank card and the remainder of $4 on the Mutual of Idaho? Oh, what's that? Oh, you need me to peel off the tape and activate it? Okay. But the thing is, now with the internet, it's like not even physically challenging to stalk. You remember when it was like physically challenging? You had to hang from trees and like hide in bushes and like rummage through garbage, remember? For clues about who she is? to do that anymore, it's so easy. Now I just like go on your Facebook or MySpace profile and I'll, like, I'll look at your hobbies and I'll just cut and paste that into my hobbies. <laughs> and then I'll email you and be like, hey, it looks like we have a lot in common. <laughs> Yoga, walks on the beach, our favorite quotes are both, nobody puts baby in a corner. Talk about with girls, like I see them reading books. Girls like to read books. That is unfathomable to me to read a whole book. That's ridiculous. I mean, like sometimes I'll, I'll like I'll have a book at a bookstore and I'll open it, like, but I'm really just staring at girls and like hoping they think I'm interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, because the thing is, it's like it, it doesn't even make any sense to read a whole book if your goal is just to meet a girl and have something to talk about, like that book, because it takes like 20 hours to read a book. How long does that book conversation really last? Right, five, ten seconds. <laughs> oh, Kite Runner. I read that. It was um, good. <laughs> really. Good. But I will read the book Jacket, though, you know, because that's quick and it makes you sound even smarter, right? Like, watch this. It's like, oh, Kite Runner? That Khalid Hosseini, he really writes with the wisdom of a man twice his age. <laughs> so I am single now, but I have a lot of these, like, boyfriend -y skills that I feel like I've, you know, I've acquired. <laughs> and they're not really that helpful in this callous, single world, you know? Like, I... I, I woke up in the middle of the night at this girl's apartment and I went to go pee pee. And I got back and I tapped her on the shoulder. I'm like, hey, hey, if you have to go, um, I put the toilet seat down. She's like, what are you doing here? We had sex over an hour ago. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do the like call every three days. I just call every Saturday night at 4 a.m. until I get this text that says, please delete my number. <laughs> but I'm not gonna do that. I mean, you gave that to me. I can do with that whatever I want for the rest of my life. I see it as you have two options. You can get a restraining order, or you can change your number. Don't be an Indian giver, though. <laughs> but do you have a girlfriend? I'd be like, well, technically. Wait, 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 wait. let me call her. No, 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 I'll call, I'll call her right now. Wait there, wait there, wait there. We're in an open relationship. No, 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 seriously, I'll, I'll call her right now. Hello? Yeah, can you put my girlfriend on the phone? <laughs> Anybody else here worried about the American economy lately? I went to Canada the other day. The Canadian dollar is equal to the American dollar. Does this not bother anybody? I thought the whole purpose of the existence of Canada was to have a place we go and throw our money around and feel good about ourselves. <laughs> right? Your wife leaves you, you lose your job. Just, you know, go up to Montreal, spend a couple hundred bucks, you live like a king. <laughs> Even the third world countries are catching up. In fact, I was going to go on a safari, but I had to cancel it because the U.S. currency isn't even doing strong against the currency of Botswana. The bag of elephant dung. <laughs> it's about one to one with the dollar. Had to cancel a trip to Thailand because the American dollar is not doing strong against their currency. The Thai transvestite. 
You only get four. What am I gonna do with four transvestites? It's not a harem. That's like a weird looking intramural basketball team. <laughs> you know, the only way I can think of getting my hands on a big wad of money is a death in the family. I know that's a morbid thought, you know, but um, it's like my 86 year old rich grandmother with a heart condition always says, Matt, if you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything. <laughs> so I'm trying to expedite her demise. The thing is, old people can be really stubborn, they just won't die. Like I took her to the movies, saw three, didn't die. So I took her to the park after that, great adventure, took her out of the screen machine. She tried to put the seatbelt on, I'm like, no, Grandma, gravity will get you through the loops. And it did. Unbelievable. Oh, it's so bad, it's gotten to the point where I'm trying to buy things with a potential windfall. I went to Best Buy to buy a DVD player. They're like, sir, is that cash or charge? I'm like, do you guys take wills? Because I'm taking my grandma to a haunted house on Friday. But nobody ever talks about the downside of technology. You know, they're talking about how, how secure everything is. Like, the wave of the future is uh, storing your identity in your fingertips, biometrics, they call it. Sounds all great, you know, but uh, I just picture somebody chopping my arm off so they can go to the gym, right? Can't you see that? Like, so somebody walking into New York Sports Club, yo, let me see your ID. Oh uh, yeah, it's right here in this Ziploc bag with ice. <laughs> my buddy Matt said I could borrow his arm. He wasn't using it. But you know what's next to is uh, a retinal scan. So that's, that's where your identification is going to be. That's going to be a pleasant mugging, isn't it? Yo, man, your eyeballs are your life. I don't know, that's a really tough, really tough question. I have a bit of a chip on my shoulder from, uh, from childhood. It was a series of disappointments. The biggest one being uh, when I found out my dad had a boss. <laughs> I used to think the world was God, my dad, me. Very traumatized when I found out it was God, Shlomo Cooperman, <laughs> Sheila Murphy, Ryan Zimmerman, my dad, me. I was a late bloomer to make matters worse. Yeah, when I, when I was in high school, I was five feet, 97 pounds. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of how small that is, you remember Webster? He was 5'2", 130. <laughs> Stocky little guy, yeah. Oh man, and I, I was too small for my older siblings' hand-me-downs, so I got my younger siblings' hand-me-ups. Her name was Kimberly. <laughs> yeah, my least favorite word as a kid, unisex. Oh, Matt, come on, try it on. Kim's not wearing it anymore. I'm like, no, I'm not wearing Kim's hand-me-ups, no. Oh, come on, Matt, don't be such a baby. Blue's a neutral color. On a tutu! <laughs> My dad thought it was a good idea for me to, you know, play football. Like, I, you know, I thought, like, oh, I'll be accepted if I play football, but obviously in my size that wasn't gonna work. And it's like, well, why let me play team sports anyway, right? Because my dad's like, oh, I'll teach you teamwork. Not if you never get on the field. He's like, yeah, you know, and, and Coach Hayes, he was like, yeah, you know, the, the building blocks of success, hard work, dedication, leadership. I, I should have been like, uh, Coach, I got three for you. Uh, wedgies, getting stuffed in lockers, and getting called a scrub. Building blocks of a sociopath. Thank you, Coach Hayes. Now, every perceived slight in my mind, I go into a homicidal rage. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is that my boss and I, we do have a little bit of like an interesting relationship, you know, like we play these little games at work, like, actually I don't even know if he knows we're playing. We play this one, I like to play hide and seek. <laughs> play that at work. He's like, damn it, Matt, I was looking all over for you. <laughs> like, did you check the coat closet? <laughs> or the movie theater on 63rd and Lex? <laughs> from Law and Order. I saw this sign, it was an organ donation sign. I don't know if anybody saw this one. It said, Jerry Orbach gave his heart and soul to acting, but the gift of sight to two New Yorkers. Somebody's gotta explain this to me. So we're splitting up eyeballs when you donate them. I don't think he knew that when he signed up. It's a package deal for certain things. Like fine, kidneys you can split up, but eyeballs, I mean what, instead of like saving some Poor blind guy, we're gonna give two pirates eyeballs. <laughs> oh man, you guys have been great.